In a quest to save the world by introducing efficient and sustainable alternatives for energy generation, science has once again found a diamond when they were merely looking for coal. We know that solar energy works wonders in generating energy supplies. We also know that the physical laws of renewability do not bind it. What if we tell you that scientists have discovered a mineral called perovskite that will update the solar cells used today? First, let's dive deep into what exactly perovskite is, how it can help make solar cells better, and why people are calling it the future of energy. Stay with us till the end and find out how a simple mineral can save all of us from the oncoming worldwide energy shortage and why it hasn't been used up until now. Spoiler alert, as all good things, perovskite has some catches too. Normal solar cells are devices that convert energy from the sun into electricity. The device is fabricated using silicon, which is quite expensive and not efficient enough. For years, researchers have tried looking into other alternatives to replace silicon and make solar cells available to the masses. And for years, they've found nothing but disappointment. Until one day, when a team of researchers from the University of Hong Kong and Imperial College London discovered an interesting way to create solar cells, making solar energy far more efficient and cheaper. Researchers found what appeared to be just a simple rock that looked like coal. And after various tests, the results and data they collected were astonishing. A big sigh of relief, for they have finally found what could be the best alternative to silicon-based solar cells. Perovskites are minerals found in the mantle of the Earth. The minerals were first discovered by Russian mineralogist Gustav Rose decades ago. And up until a few years ago, perovskites seemed to have no value. It was just lying there, untouched and unutilized. The mineral is made up of a combination of titanium, calcium and oxygen in a crystal structure. From the looks of it, perovskite is a simple compound. But when researchers dug deeper into its properties, they found impressive qualities that could replace the silicon in solar cells. These properties include superconductivity, Sprintronics, giant magneto resistance, and catalytic capabilities. These big words might be a bit difficult for all of us to digest, but it simply means that the atoms in the perovskites have exceptional abilities to turn sunlight into energy, also at a price extremely lower than that of silicon. So what if it's cheaper? If being cheap was the only reason people call it the future of energy, many celebrities deserve to be called the future of Hollywood. But unlike those celebrities, perovskites have so much more to offer. You see, the main reasons that perovskites have garnered the attention of researchers from all over the world are cell efficiency, cheaper rates, increased sustainability, and an open circuit voltage that gives silicon-based solar cells a run for its money. Cell efficiency simply means the amount of solar energy that can be converted into electricity through photovoltaics. Silicon-based solar cells have a cell efficiency of only 16 to 20 percent. That seems like a good number, but researchers daydream about perovskite and all they could do with it compared to the high costs it takes. Perovskite has a cell efficiency of up to 25 percent, and for the cheap cost it's available at, it's a gift from God itself. It doesn't end there though. The mineral can be easily accessed and will become the leading candidate for the Zero Carbon Emission Award of the century. Oh, and its open circuit voltage is a dream come true for all of us. Let us make open circuit voltage easier to understand. We know it seems extremely technical, but it all comes down to the amount of energy lost during the conversion of sunlight into electricity. Why is that important? If we're losing more than half of the energy from sunlight, what will we be converting into electricity? It's as simple as that. And with perovskites, we can conserve almost 70% of energy from the photon, which is quite a game changer compared to silicon's less than 50% conservation. Perovskite truly seems like the best option. So why is it not being used? It can save us from a crisis, yet we haven't seen one commercial use of what is apparently the future of energy. Sounds suspicious. Is perovskite all talk and no game? Did we get our hopes up for no reason? Well, there's something stopping scientists from going crazy with perovskite's uses. As we said, all good things come with a stumbling block. Two steps forward, one step back. Are you ready to hear about the dark secret? Perovskite might have been the light at the end of a long tunnel, but it's nowhere near bright enough. You see, the biggest drawback of perovskite is that it's very, very unstable. The atoms in its composition can break down even due to the smallest of inconveniences. The mineral loses itself and its incredible properties during tough times, like Thor in Endgame, proving to be unreliable. 
The cells can be affected by varying factors. Apart from external factors such as water and temperature, even internal factors like heat cause it to lose stability. As a matter of fact, the longest stability reported for perovskite was only a year. However, silicon-based solar cells can withstand damaging temperatures, rain, and whatnot. The perovskite alternative would just stop working, lose its value, and stop being the shining star we all want it to be. Perovskite can't be available in the markets unless scientists find a way to make it stable. And not just for a few years. The mineral has to have stability for at least two to three decades before researchers can finally put down their thinking hat and use perovskite as an alternative energy source. Don't be disheartened though. Scientists all over the world are trying their best to find a hack for this problem. There are numerous ongoing researches to help improve perovskite stability and make it available for commercial use. Different groups of researchers have used different techniques for this purpose. Some think that mixing it with some inorganic contents will make it more stable, while others are going for a more technical design, such as extensively modifying the device's outlook to prevent it from decaying. Nitin Padur, a professor of materials engineering at Brown University and the director of the Institute of Molecular and Nanoscale Innovation, has been working with a highly qualified team of researchers to solve the problems associated with traditional solar energy. One of his main focuses is to improve perovskite stability and make it the future of energy people think it is. Another problem that Padtour noted about perovskite over the years is that it's not easy to reproduce a high-quality film of perovskite for large quantities of solar panels. The light at the end of the tunnel keeps thinning. The world of technology and energy generation relies on the development that will make perovskite more reliable. Perovskite solar cells are emerging cells that could be the face of energy generation in the coming years. From efficiency to sustainability, from low cost to accessibility, it has everything we're looking for. The problems the world is facing can go away in a few years' worth of time. The impending energy crisis, the high costs of conventional solar cells, the consistent fear of doom, and the high carbon emission are just some of the factors that will get better over time once perovskite is being used. So, people are hopeful about perovskite, but they're also being practical. It may take years before it's ready to be used for commercial purposes, but once it's ready, we know it's going to be a huge success. After all, not all of us are rich enough to afford silicon-based solar cells, and unless the price drastically decreases over the years, it's safe to say that we will collectively run towards perovskite. It has the seal of approval from our side. So, do you think that it'll be the technology that finally helps us reduce our carbon footprint? Or should the researchers keep looking for a better option?